While talking about the Brady kids from The Brady Bunch, most people often lump together all the kids who were a part of the cast as if they were all interchangeable. People often made the same mistake with the Beatles, especially during their early years. However, Lloyd J. Schwartz, a producer on The Brady Bunch, never shied away from accepting that although the actors were extremely talented, there was something different about Eve Plum. While her co-stars Barry Williams, Christopher Knight, Maureen McCormick, Mike Lookinland, and Susan Olsen were all very talented in their own ways, the fact that Eve came from an entertainment background allowed her to stand out from the others in every scene. Eve's sister was an established actress and her father was a music producer. Therefore, she came with an innate understanding of the entertainment world. She portrayed the middle child syndrome with such ease and finesse that viewers soon began to accept her as their favorite. After all, it's been 46 years since the Brady Bunch went off the air, and many of us clearly remember Jan Brady and Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. We agree the entire cast of the show was undeniably very talented, but Eve Plum certainly is our favorite Brady Bunch member. Why? We have our reason. She portrayed the agony of being a middle child perfectly well. She impressed us with her choice of the first film. She inspired a band's name, and she's somehow also connected to the Batman theme. In this video, we'll tell you why Eve Plum is our favorite Brady Bunch member. Many of the Brady kids signed record deals, but Eve Plum was the first one to sign one. Back in the 1970s, the Brady kids were quite popular, and therefore they did not have much of a problem signing their first album as a group. In 1970, the Brady kids released their first album titled Merry Christmas from the Brady Bunch. The album was a success and provided the Brady kids with a chance to launch their solo careers as well. Barry Williams, who some of us know better as Greg Brady, dropped his first single in November of 1971. On the other hand, Maureen McCormick, who played Marsha Brady on the hit show, and Chris Knight, who played Peter Brady, got their big break in 1973. Even Mike Lookinland, inspired by the rest of the cast members, decided to foray into the world of singing with Love Doesn't Care Who's In It. But guess who was the first of all the Brady kids to sign a record deal? Yep, Eve Plum. She recorded How Will It Be with RCA Records in 1971. Eve Plum chose a black exploitation genre film to make her big screen debut. For her big screen debut, Eve Plum chose Keenan Ivory Wayans' I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. The film was a spoof on the 70s black exploitation genre, which was quite popular during the 70s. Eve's big debut also featured several famous African-American actors, including Bernie Casey, Isaac Hayes, and Jim Brown. The film was also the debut film of the popular comedian Robin Harris. I'm Gonna Get You Sucker was made on a small budget of $3 million, but the film earned $10 million in profits at the box office. This critically acclaimed film was well received by both the critics as well as viewers, and further established Eve Plum's stature as a bona fide actress. She was a part of Dick Tracy. William Dozer played a key role in filling ABC's coffers with his original series Batman. In January 1966, in an attempt to replicate Batman's success, Dozier started working on a TV version of the Dick Tracy comic strip. Chester Gould's comic strip about a tough detective first appeared in Detroit Mirror on October 4, 1931. The comic strip was an instant hit and eventually was made into various film serials and feature films. To convince the network, Dozier shot a pilot. The opening credits of this pilot featured Eve Plum as Bonnie Braids. The pilot featured her both as a cartoon as well as herself. Though NBC came very close to picking up the series, it was never picked up. She started making smart investment decisions at the young age of 11. Not many 11-year-olds think of the future and make real estate investments they know would bring huge returns in the future. But Eve Plum was never your average child actor. She was always too smart for her age. When she was only 11, Eve, with the help of her parents, bought a Malibu beach house for $55,350. This property sat nicely on the exclusive Escondido Beach. The flat-roofed bungalow that Eve put up for sale in 2016 had three bedrooms spread over 850 square feet of space. Guess how much did the 1950s blue cottage sell for? $3.9 million. Even if you adjust the figure for inflation, the house still sold for 10 times its original value. It was proposed that the new property coming up in the area will have three bedrooms spread over 3,500 square feet of space and two and a half bathrooms. Eve will forever be our favorite Brady Bunch member. Investing in real estate at the right time is one of the many wise decisions she made in her life. She also said no to the Brady Bunch hour for a very good reason, and though many thought she was making a mistake at the time, she shut her critics down. 
And if that's not impressive enough, she even inspired a band's name. We'll give you more details in a minute, so stick around. Meanwhile, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Here's how her father is connected to the ever-popular Batman theme. Since we're talking about Batman, it's important to highlight the connection between the Batman theme and Eve Plum's father. Batman theme is the title song that accompanied the 1966 classic TV series Batman. The theme instantly reminds one of spy films and continues to be extremely popular even today. Hundreds of famous artists have done covers of the Batman theme, which was originally created by Neil Hefty. The theme was produced by Neely Plum, Eve's father. Neely Plum was a saxophone maestro turned music producer with RCA. Other than producing the Batman theme, he's also remembered for producing artists like Carol Burnett and Don Johnson. He also produced his daughter's first record alongside RCA. He earned five gold records for producing various hit artists and soundtrack albums. Like Eve, her sister was also an accomplished actress. Eve Plum certainly comes from a very talented family. Her father was a music producer and her elder sister was a talented actress like Eve. Flora Plum was 14 years older than Eve. While Eve played Clarence Williams III's wife in I'm Gonna Get You Sucka, Flora worked with him in The Mod Squad, the popular crime drama series that ran between 1968 and 1973. Flora appeared in the episode titled Home is the Streets. Like Eve, Flora was also an accomplished actress who made her mark through films such as The Wild Wild West, Lou Grant and Quincy, Young Lawyers, and Marcus Welby. In 2010, she appeared in Guild Wars 2 as the voice of Oscar. She also taught directing and acting at Los Angeles County High School for the Arts for 25 years. Unfortunately, she passed away in July 2018. She inspired the name of a music band. You know you're cool when a band decides to name itself after you. Yes, Eve Plum inspired the name of a 90s band. Eve's Plum was a New York City-based grunge pop band that hit the music scene in the 90s. The band's first single was called Blue, and it featured Jan Brady's face on the record. The band, however, did not do very well and broke up in 1998. Most people who have heard of the band know of it because of Colleen Fitzpatrick, who was Eve's Plum's singer. Colleen later left the band and gained popularity as Vitamin C. She also has a spoken word record to her credit. Patrick Williams was a music composer, arranger, and conductor whose music accompanied various popular TV shows, including The Bob Newhart Show, Columbo, Lou Grant, and The Streets of San Francisco. In 1974, Williams created a record called The California Love Story, and he made Eve Plum a part of it. Eve had a spoken word bit in the record, and it was rather enchanting. She made the Partridge family and the Brady Bunch come together. Louisa May Alcott's Little Women, which tells the story of four sisters as they journey from childhood into womanhood, continues to be incredibly popular today. The book was published under two different volumes in 1868 and 69, and since then inspired many adaptations. In fact, every genre has its own adaptation of this iconic book. From Katherine Hepburn to Winona Ryder and Kirsten Dunst, many famous actresses have been a part of various Little Women adaptations. Of course, Eve Plum had to have her name on this list. In 1978, a miniseries based on the book was created and featured many famous faces from the television world. Eve Plum played Beth and Susan Day of the Partridge family played Joe March. William Shatner and William Shallert were also a part of the project. She did not reprise her role in the Brady Bunch Hour. The success of the Brady Bunch led to the variety show The Brady Bunch Hour. The variety show seemed like a good way to make money off the popularity of the original cast. Therefore, it's not surprising that many of the Brady kids reprised their role in the show. However, the Brady Bunch Hour will always be remembered for Fake Jan, played by Jerry Reichel. Eve Plum had agreed to do a few episodes of the show. However, the producers wanted her to commit for a full season. Eve, on the other hand, wanted to get into serious acting and therefore wasn't ready for that kind of commitment. In the end, the producers threatened her with an accept-it-all or walk-out contract, and Eve decided to walk out. Many people thought the actress was making a huge mistake. However, it looks like she knew what she was doing. The same year, she impressed fans with her portrayal of a prostitute in the made-for-television drama film titled Dawn, Portrait of a Teenage Runaway. So, do you agree with us when we say Eve Plum will always be the coolest Brady Bunch kid? Or do you have other favorites? Who do you like most and why? Please share with us. We'd love to hear from you. 
Before you move on to the next Faxverse video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest videos.